While this grape harvest is extremely small in quantity and the size of the grapes, it is a considerable psychological value to us. What it establishes for us is that we can defeat the European wasps and actually get a crop of grapes. So this is the first year that we've had any grapes off these. Next year with some more compost and some further attention I'm hoping for a better harvest. But autumn has other harvests that are far more significant in quantity to us and the first of those is the apples. We have just two trees of golden delicious apples but they form a considerable portion of our harvest. I've found that they should be picked as soon as they show some slight yellowing. This is also usually the stage that the European wasps start to attack them. Leave them too long and you lose too many. Now while apples that have been ripened on the tree will definitely taste better, they will not keep as long. Storing apples here in the children's playhouse is not of course the ideal place in terms of that it disrupts the children's play a little bit and uses up a bit of space. But it is great in terms of the conditions here. This playhouse, because of the fact that it has a sod roof and is sheltered uh, to the sun side by a tree, in winter it doesn't feel very much different to a fridge. So the children don't tend to play here that much anyway at that time of the year. And the apples I find keep really well. Until the end of winter they will keep in here quite fine. Now of course having them in boxes like this is also far from ideal in that if an apple is going off in the bottom you don't really know about it unless you're regularly sorting through your boxes and sorting through boxes all the time is likely to damage apples anyway and you're likely to bruise them. So the ideal thing is to have a single layer tray and this here is an example where I have a plastic tray and I've put apples on a single layer. Ideally I need to build or purchase trays which would allow me to store the apples like this because then I would immediately see if anything is going bad and be able to remove it. In here we have stored three varieties of apples that I've picked so far. We have also as well as these three that I'm going to talk about in a moment we have Granny Smiths that are still on the tree and they will stay there quite well for another four weeks at least. Uh, you can leave them even longer but probably about another four weeks is ideal. So that would be picking here at the end of uh, May which is uh, late in autumn. Now the first and one of my favourites here is the Johnny Gold. This is a delicious eating apple. I found that it stores quite well also. So it's one of my top recommendations. Good size, they're, they're quite a meal in these apples, but really nice. You can juice them, cook them, eat them fresh. We probably will use those, the Johnny Golds, for that purpose rather than for anything else. The second, we haven't got a lot of these, is the Mutsu, and I like eating them fresh, but probably their number one purpose is as a cooking apple. We probably have a little less of these this year than last year, but the trees tend to be cyclic, so next year we'll probably have more again. And, but a delicious apple, really, really big, so yeah, a really good cooker. And we have a lot of the Golden Delicious. Now these are a really nice fresh eating apple. I also find them very useful for drying because when they dry they're a really nice sweet apple and a size that is also very easy to utilize. So this will probably be the number one drying apple. Some of these may also go into bottles for preservation as well because of the quantity of, that we have. We've got a lot more apples here than we will eat fresh as a family in the time that I'm able to store them. However, we will process these apples. Bottling quite a few, uh, what you in America call canning, and also drying apples once we start to light the fire in the cooler weather. So the harvest will be used. We also will give a few away to friends. It's nice to have some excess to be able to do that. Now some people when they see this sort of quantity ask the question, 
why don't you sell some of your produce? Well, the answer for us is on two levels. Number one is that we grow with the intent of feeding our family, of self-reliance. We don't grow to sell. So the amount that we produce is only really enough for us in terms of storage and processing, as well as fresh eating, and a little bit to give away. I don't try and produce more than that. Now, it may be this, that as trees grow that we do start to produce more uh, and have to find another way of dealing with it. The second factor is that we don't live on the beaten track, so to speak. We don't have traffic passing by us. Uh, we're not in a community that is close by. So that to sell, we would have to go to market and taking small quantities of produce to market involves expenses in fuel, market costs that totally outweigh uh, the value. I would much rather spend that time in actual preservation in terms of putting them into bottles or drying them so that we can actually get it later in the year. Because the price that people are prepared to pay for your homegrown produce really almost seems like an insult when you go to put it out knowing how much effort you've put it into producing it. So that's why we don't sell our produce at this point in time and we would have to have massive excess for it to be worthwhile doing that. One of the jobs of autumn is harvesting the pumpkins and what I'm finding as I do so is that these pumpkins probably should have been harvested two to three or maybe even four weeks earlier with some of them. With some of these pumpkins, where they have been in contact with the soil, there is some damage to the skin. And this is going to significantly reduce their keeping life. Now, this is the first time I've grown this type of pumpkin, which is small sugar. I haven't really had this problem with most of the pumpkins I've grown in the past, but these came in a very short season, so in some ways they've been actually sitting on the ground you might say longer than I normally would have pumpkins sitting after they had ripened. So what I really need if I grow these again what I need to look at is one to harvest them a little bit earlier otherwise to actually find a way to actually lift them off the ground. Now I'm not sure what that's going to be. It might be a piece of board or I might think of something else or some of you might have some other experiences how to actually keep this type of pumpkin uh, so that it doesn't damage and keeps longer. But it means I'll need to sort through these. The ones that have damage will need to be utilised first and the others will be put aside to keep. Now, pumpkins I find keep best somewhere that is a little bit on the warmer side for winter not hot but just a little warmer and therefore a little bit drier they don't like to be too cold or too moist because this can set some uh, fungus going around the uh, stalk area and can send them off so I'd be interested to uh, hear from anybody what they have found or what you have found to be the uh, best pumpkin storage areas because when you've got quite a few pumpkins, it does present a little bit of a uh, challenge where you're going to store them successfully.